the uncertainty performance domain addresses activities associated with risk and uncertainty. Effective execution of this performance domain results in the following desired outcomes. An awareness of the environment in which projects occur, including but not limited to the technical, social, political, market, and economic environments. Proactively exploring and responding to uncertainty. An awareness of the interdependence of multiple variables on the project. The capacity to anticipate threats and opportunities and understand the consequences of issues. Project delivery with little or no negative impact from unforeseen events or conditions. Opportunities are realized to improve project performance and outcomes. Cost and schedule reserves are utilized effectively to maintain alignment with project objectives. Projects exist in environments with varying degrees of uncertainty. Uncertainty presents threats and opportunities that project teams explore, assess, and decide how to handle. Uncertainty in the broadest sense is a state of not knowing or unpredictability. There are many nuances to uncertainty, such as risk associated with not knowing future events, ambiguity associated with not being aware of current or future conditions, and complexity associated with dynamic systems having unpredictable outcomes. Successfully navigating uncertainty begins with understanding the larger environment within which the project is operating. What are the aspects of the environment that contribute to project uncertainty? They include economic factors uh, such as volatility in prices, availability of resources, ability to borrow funds, and inflation deflation, technical considerations uh, such as new or emerging technology, complexity associated with systems and interfaces, legal or legislative constraints or requirements, physical environment as it pertains to safety, weather, and working conditions, ambiguity associated with current or future conditions, social and market influences shaped by opinion and media, and political influences either external or internal to the organization. This performance domain addresses the various aspects of uncertainty implications of uncertainty, such as project risk, as well as options for navigating the various forms of uncertainty. Uncertainty is inherent in all projects. For the reason, the effects of any activity cannot be predicted precisely and a range of outcomes can occur. Potential outcomes that benefit the project objectives are known as opportunities. Potential outcomes that have a negative effect on objectives are called threats. Together, the set of opportunities and threats comprise the set of project risks. What are some options for responding to uncertainty? There are several options for responding to uncertainty. The first one is gather information. Sometimes uncertainty can be reduced by finding out 
more information, such as conducting research, engaging experts, or performing a market analysis. It is also important to recognize when further information collection and analysis exceed the benefit of having the additional information. The next one is prepare for multiple outcomes. In situations where there are only a few possible outcomes from an area of uncertainty, the project team can prepare for each of those outcomes. This entails having a primary solution available, as well as having backup or contingency plans in case the initial solution is not viable or effective. Where there is a large set of potential outcomes, the project team can categorize and assess the potential causes to estimate their likelihood of occurrence. This allows the project team to identify the most likely potential outcomes on which to focus. The next one is set-based design. Multiple designs or alternatives can be investigated early in the project to reduce uncertainty. This allows the project team to look at trade-offs such as time versus cost, quality versus cost, risk versus schedule, or schedule versus quality. The intention is to explore options so the project team can learn from working with the various alternatives. Ineffective or suboptimal alternatives are discarded throughout the process. The next, building resilience. Resilience is the ability to adapt and respond quickly to unexpected changes. Resilience applies to both project team members and organizational processes. If the initial approach to product design or a prototype is not effective, the project team and the organization need to be able to learn, adapt, and respond quickly. Now we come to the topic of ambiguity. Yes, there are two categories of ambiguity. Conceptual ambiguity and situational ambiguity. Conceptual ambiguity, the lack of effective understanding, occurs when people use similar terms or arguments in different ways. For example, the statement the schedule was reported on track last week is not clear. It isn't clear whether the schedule was on track last week or whether it was reported last week. In addition, there could be some questions as to what on track means. Ambiguity of this type can be reduced by formally establishing common rules and definitions of terms, such as what does on track mean? Situational ambiguity surfaces when more than one outcome is possible. Having multiple options to solve a problem is a form of situational ambiguity. What are the solutions of exploration of ambiguity? Solutions for exploration of ambiguity include progressive elaboration, experimentation, and the use of prototypes. Can you explain them, Mr. Rizgi? Sure. The first one is progressive elaboration. This is the iterative process of increasing the well level of detail in a project management plan as greater amounts of information and more accurate estimates become available. The next one is experiments. A well-designed series of experiments can help identify cause and effect relationships, or at least can reduce the amount of ambiguity. The next one is prototypes. Prototypes can help distinguish 
relationships between different variables. Now, let's talk about complexity. Okay, complexity is a characteristic of a program project or its environment, which is difficult to manage due to human behavior, system behavior, or ambiguity. Complexity exists when there are many interconnected influences that behave and interact in diverse ways. In complex environments, it is common to see an aggregation of individual elements leading to unforeseen or unintended outcomes. The effect of complexity is that there is no way of making accurate predictions about the likelihood of any potential outcome or even of knowing what outcomes might emerge. What are some ways to work with complexity? There are numerous ways to work with complexity. Some of them are system-based, some entail reframing, and others are based on process. What are the examples of working with complexity that is system-based? Examples of working with complexity that is systems-based include decoupling and simulation. Decoupling entails disconnecting parts of the system to both simplify the system and reduce the number of connected variables. Determining how a piece of a system works on its own reduces the overall size of the problem. On the other hand, as far as simulation is concerned, there may be similar, though unrelated scenarios that can be used to simulate components of a system. A project to build a new airport that includes an area with shopping and restaurants can learn about consumer buying habits by seeking out analogous information on shopping malls and entertainment establishments. What are the examples of working with complexity that entail reframing? Examples of working with complexity that entail reframing are diversity and balance. Complex systems require viewing the system from diverse perspectives. This can include brainstorming with the project team to open up divergent ways of seeing the system. It can also include Delphi-like processes to move from divergent to convergent thinking. Balancing the type of data used rather than only using forecasting data or data that reports on the past or lagging indicators provides a broader perspective. This can include using elements whose variations are likely to counteract each other's potential negative effects. What are the examples of working with complexity that is process-based? Examples of working with complexity that is process-based include Iterate, engage, and fail safe. Build iterative floor incrementally. Add features one at a time. After each iteration, identify what worked, what did not work, customer reaction, and what the project team learned. Build in opportunities to get stakeholder engagement. This reduces the number of assumptions and builds learning and engagement into the process. For elements of a system that are critical, build in redundancy or elements that can provide a graceful degradation of functionality in the event of a critical component failure. Volatility can occur when there are ongoing fluctuations in available skill sets or materials. Volatility usually impacts cost and schedule. Alternative analysis and use of cost or schedule reserve address volatility. Can you explain them to us, Mr. Rizgi? 
finding and evaluating alternatives, such as looking at different ways to meet an objective, such as using a different mix of skills, resequencing work, or outsourcing work. Alternatives analysis may include identifying the variables to be considered in evaluating options and the relative importance or weight of each variable. Cost reserve can be used to cover budget overruns due to price volatility. In some circumstances, schedule reserves can be used to address delays due to volatility associated with resource availability. Effectively navigating uncertainty, ambiguity, complexity, and volatility improves the ability to anticipate situations, make good decisions, plan, and solve problems. Okay, now we have come to a new topic, which is risk. Risks are an aspect of uncertainty. A risk is an uncertain event or condition that, if it occurs, has a positive or negative effect on one or more project objectives. Negative risks are called threats, and positive risks are called opportunities. All projects have risks since they are unique undertakings with varying degrees of uncertainty. Project team members should proactively identify risks throughout the project to avoid or minimize the impacts of threats and trigger or maximize the impacts of opportunities. Both threats and opportunities have a set of possible response strategies that can be planned for implementation should the risk occur. In order to navigate risk effectively, the project team needs to know what level of risk exposure is acceptable in pursuit of the project objectives. This is defined by measurable risk thresholds that reflect the risk appetite and attitude of the organization and project stakeholders. Risk thresholds express the acceptable variation around an objective that reflects the risk appetite of the organization and stakeholders. Thresholds are typically stated and communicated to the project team and reflected in the definition of risk impact levels for the project. What is overall project risk? Overall project risk is the effect of uncertainty on the project as a whole arising from all sources of uncertainty. This includes individual risks and the exposure to the implications of variation in project outcome, both positive and negative. Overall risk is often a function of complexity, ambiguity, and volatility. Responses to overall project risk are the same as for individual threats and opportunities, though responses are applied to the overall project rather than to a specific event. If the overall risk on the project is too high, the organization may choose to cancel the project. A threat is an event or condition that, if it occurs, has a negative impact on one or more objectives. What are the strategies that may be considered for dealing with threats? Five alternative strategies may be considered for dealing with threats. The first one is avoid. Threat avoidance is when the project team acts to eliminate the threat or protect the project from its impact. The second one is escalate. Escalation is appropriate when the project team or the project sponsor agrees that a threat is outside the scope of the project or 
that the proposed response would exceed the project manager's authority. The third one is transfer. Transfer involves shifting ownership of a threat to a third party to manage the risk and to bear the impact if the threat occurs. The fourth one is mitigate. In threat mitigation, action is taken to reduce the probability of occurrence and or impact of a threat. Early mitigation action is often more effective than trying to repair the damage after the threat has occurred. The fifth one and the last one is accept. Threat acceptance acknowledges the existence of a threat, but no proactive action is planned. Actively accepting a risk can include developing a contingency plan that would be triggered if the event occurred, or it can include passive acceptance, which means doing nothing. A response to a specific threat might include multiple strategies. For example, if the threat cannot be avoided, it may be mitigated to a level at which it becomes viable to transfer or to accept it. The figure on the screen shows how risks are tracked and reduced over time. The goal of implementing threat responses is to reduce the amount of negative risks. Risks that are accepted sometimes are reduced simply by the passage of time or because the risk event does not occur. Okay, an opportunity is an event or condition that if it occurs has a positive impact on one or more project objectives. An example of an opportunity could be a time and materials based subcontractor who finished work early, resulting in lower costs and scheduled savings. What are the strategies that may be considered for dealing with opportunities? Five alternative strategies may be considered for dealing with opportunities. The first one is exploit. A response strategy whereby the project team acts to ensure that an opportunity occurs. The second one is escalate. As with threats, this opportunity response strategy is used when the project team or the project sponsor agrees that an opportunity is outside the scope of the project or that the proposed response would exceed the project manager's authority. The third one is share. Opportunity sharing involves allocating ownership of an opportunity to a third party who is best able to capture the benefit of that opportunity. The fourth one is enhance. In opportunity enhancement, the project team acts to increase the probability of occurrence or impact of an opportunity. Early enhancement action is often more effective than trying to improve the opportunity after it has occurred. The fifth one and the last one is accept. As with threats, accepting an opportunity acknowledges its existence, but no proactive action is planned. Once a set of risk responses has been developed, it should be reviewed to see whether the planned responses have added any secondary risks. The review should also assess the residual risk that will remain once the response actions have been carried out. Response planning should be repeated until residual risk is compatible with the organization's risk appetite. Okay, let's talk about management and contingency Reserve. Reserve is an amount of time or budget set aside to account for handling risks. Contingency reserve is set aside to address identified risks should 
they occur. Management reserve is a budget category used for unknown events such as unplanned in-scope work. Another subject is risk review, establishing a frequent rhythm or cadence of review and feedback sessions from a broad selection of stakeholders is helpful for navigating project risk and in proactive with risk responses. Daily stand-up meetings can be used in any project and are a source for identifying potential threats and opportunities. Reports of blockers or impediments could become threats if they continue to delay progress. Likewise, reports of progress and breakthroughs might point toward opportunities to be further leveraged and shared. Frequent demonstrations of increments of the product or service, interim designs or proof of concepts can surface threats and opportunities. Negative feedback from demonstrations or design reviews can be an early indicator of threats related to dissatisfaction from stakeholders if not corrected. Positive feedback helps inform the project team regarding the areas of development highly valued by the business representatives. Addressing risk at weekly status meetings ensures that risk management remains relevant. These meetings can be used to identify new risks as well as identify changes to existing risks. Retrospectives and lessons learned meetings can be used to identify threats to performance, project team cohesion, etc., and to seek improvements. They can also help identify practices to try different ways to exploit and enhance opportunities.